Last time on Sailing Britican. Simon explained our passage plan from Amelia Island to St. Augustine. Our volunteer crew member Andrew gave an update regarding the race we had going between us and our sailing companion Michael aboard sailing vessel entitled. We entered the port at St. Augustine and went under the Bridge of Lions. We enjoyed the festive boat parade in millions of lights for the Knights of Lights. The five of us went to Castillo de San Marcos, and I provide a bit of history. We stop off at the Flagler College to appreciate the amazing architecture. After spending two enjoyable days and nights in St. Augustine, we and Michael aboard sailing vessel entitled slipped our mooring ball lines. It was a crisp, cool morning, and there was a very slight breeze. The sun was shining and we were eager to head down to Cape Canaveral. We're going from St. Augustine down to Cape Canaveral. So and this one's going to take us about 20 hours. So we come out of St. Augustine, come down the coast. We've got to stay out because they're, they're, they're going to be firing a rocket and we have to stay out of this danger zone. And then we come down to here. We have to stay and go a little bit south because there's a shoal and we don't want to go through there because it, it's a bit shallow and it might get a bit choppy. And then come in and then we're going to this marina here. And we'll be staying there two nights and we're going to go to the uh, space centre. Yeah, we had a good time. While we were motoring out of St. Augustine, Sienna and I played hair salon, and we also played a game with Toka Hospital. So if you broke your hands and legs and I need a new brain, mm -hmm. are we both going to be in the hospital for quite some time? Yes, probably. Andrew just asked if he could put a line in the water. Oh. It's dolphins? Andrew's I saw a whale. Andrew's looking for air, for whales. And Simon's getting the fishing line set up. We had the wind straight on our nose, so we had to motor and so did Michael on Entitled. The sunset was absolutely spectacular. Back sailing again and another night passage. We're hoping to be down to Cape Canaveral tomorrow morning sometime. Yeah, it's absolutely a, just the clearest, clearest sky tonight. Flat calm as well. The first part of the journey we had to be, uh, we had the boat because we had no, sea, no wind at all. The second this darkness came and just the wind slowly picked up a little bit. We're not doing a lot, we're doing roughly about six knots and the wind's gusting about 20. So it's not much at all, but just ticking along very nicely indeed. Absolutely stunning night, not a, not a cloud in the sky, stars everywhere, just beautiful. A lot better <laughs> passage than last time. Last time was absolutely buried in cold and freezing cold, so this time it's actually, it's cold, but it's still pleasant. How was the night sail last night, Sam? It was very good. We um, did half and half, so it was really good. We had some good. I got some good sleep. Poor Andrew didn't know. Oh, I didn't sleep at all. Right over there is the space center, the Kennedy Space Center. Beautiful sunrise. I'm feeling really good. We actually have a day without swell, so we're just going up and down like this and not side to side. And so I've popped up. It's like 6.30 in the morning. I've got Kennedy Space Center right behind me and we're going into Cape Canaveral. So 
we'll be there soon and hopefully tomorrow we're gonna go do the Space Center tour which is something I wanted to do my entire life so I feel like a little kid <laughs> and um, now that we've made it down further in Florida and it's starting to warm up I can actually smell Florida when I was a kid I used to come here a lot so um, it's amazing how smells can bring back memories and I can smell like the, the Florida air and it always represents just happy times. Michael's just pulling down his sails. We're heading into uh, Cape Canaveral now. Really exciting, really, really exciting. Just put our engines on, it's warming up. We're still in wet weather gear and it's still a bit cold, but it's definitely warming up. We check out these visitors next to us. We got three pelicans. They're just absolutely fantastic to watch. Just coming into Port Canaveral here and Andrew's up on the front there getting the warps so we're ready to tie the boat down. While going up the river there's a variety of things to look at. This here's a casino and on the other side it looked like a submarine or some, of some sort. And then as we were coming along we came up to this big huge cat bow. It was very, very interesting. Very, very large. Let me just take a walk up here uh, along the, to the foredeck just so I can see what it looks like going forward. And there you have it. As I look around, I see people fishing and there's a variety of different kind of buildings. Some industrial, some looks like marine related, and then there's some restaurants and bars. A whole variety of things to really look at, at as we uh, venture up this river. Okay, here's the marina that we're going into. This is Cape Marina. And right there is the fuel dock. Uh, it's the first thing you come to. And then after that, there's a variety of different slips and pontoons. We are fortunate because we're going right on the end, the like T-junction on the end, so that should be pretty easy. Simon just loops around and then he gets pretty close to the jetty and the tide is pushing us in. So he's just using a combination of the tide and the bow thrusters to get us in. And as usual, it was a perfect docking. My husband is fantastic at uh, boat maneuvering. I'm so thankful he does it. See what? Bob Junk, I'll find your um, After a, a long night's um sail and we're actually arrived in Cape Canaveral and we're just going to wait for Michael to come across and we're going to give him a hand getting his boat moored up. So what Simon's doing here is he's grabbing the midship warp and he's going to spring it back. With just this one warp, um, the captain can control the boat. So we have another successful docking for Britikin and for Entitled. Yeah, and this is how Sienna gets off Britikin. She just walks along the tow rail and then climbs down from the fender. And, uh, and she's back on the jetty. What's wrong? Take a picture. Come here, look. What? Look, look at the way we're dressed. Oh, I know. Again. <laughs> yeah, somebody doesn't know how cold it is out. <laughs> now that the boats are secure, Simon and Michael will take the paperwork up to the office and book us in. The office is a short walk up the pontoon. In the office, you'll be able to book in get access cards to the marina, bathrooms, and showers. There's a shop full of touristy items in addition to ice, drinks, snacks, and even a huge freezer of frozen bait. 
The marina is secured at night with a locked fence, accessible only with a code. So here's the bathroom, really clean. Oh, there I am. And then there seems to be two showers in here and lots of space. Yeah, two showers, there's one there and one on the side. So it looks really nice. So we're gonna come back up and take a shower. There's uh, two washers and three dryers. Yeah, uh, the machines are old, but they work really well and they're really cheap, a dollar each, so it's great. A dollar for washing and a dollar for drying? That's great. <laughs> and there's a little bookshare here too. On the marina grounds, you'll also find a bike rack, ATM, picnic area with barbecue grills, in addition to a lovely swimming pool and seating area. There's also a community room. So we've got air hockey, foosball, pool table, and then we've got over here a nice uh, sofa with a TV, uh, an organ if you want to play the organ, bathroom in the game room, and there's a workout room with a beautiful mural. Here's a panoramic view of the Cape Marina. As I pan across, it's important to know how the boats are tied to the jetties. This marina uses a pylon system where boats can enter the slip bow first or stern first. Warps will need to be tied to the jetty and affixed to the pylons. If entering the marina during open hours, staff is on hand to help. Some of our boating friends that visited the marina a few days earlier suggested that we went to Milliken's Reef Restaurant for an early bird $14 prime rib special. It was a quick walk from the marina and I can attest that the prime rib was excellent. With full bellies, we headed back to the boat and went to sleep. The next day, we used Uber to get a lift from the marina to the Kennedy Space Center. The ride took about 25 minutes and cost $30. On our journey, we spotted a couple alligators, some wild pigs, and loads of very large birds. This is a dream come true. The kind Uber driver dropped us right at the door. So far so good. It looks absolutely brilliant. So I'm really kind of excited. I'm like a little child this morning. After taking this video clip, we went into the Hero Exhibition. It started off with a slideshow showcasing children, adults, and astronauts talking about who their heroes were. Throughout the presentation, I had tears develop as the messaging was so powerful. After the slideshow, we walked through various booths that displayed the characteristics that make a hero, and then there was the amazing Astronaut Hall of Fame. With the music, messaging, and consistent hero theme, I felt very proud to be human. We then took a bus ride out to the Saturn V exhibition. That was the rocket that took astronauts to the moon. Vehicle Assembly Building, the VAB, is one of the largest buildings in the world. But it doesn't look like it because there's nothing here to compare it to. Take a look at that flag on the side. Those stars are six feet from point to point. The stripes are wide enough we could drive this bus down any one of them. Take a look underneath, you can see a large rectangular cutout. You can think of that as the exhaust port. It takes about 45 minutes to open them all the way. It goes ripper rock because it's smooth and round. It's to SpaceX on a 20 year lease. You can see their assembly building there in the center. That's where they assemble their rockets horizontally. They don't use the, the crawler. They have a rail system that takes the rocket out to the launch pad. Previously, we would have built a different launch pad for each kind of rocket. Hence the need for 40-some launch pads up and down the coast. With the clean pad system, it allows us to use one launch pad for multiple kinds of rockets. After a half hour or so, the bus dropped us off at the Saturn V exhibition where we waited to enter a large room showing a slideshow and then a short movie. 
We then moved into another room with stadium seating, where we got to see the ground control setup in addition to the launch of the Saturn V. Mankind is about to leave his planet behind and journey to another. Check out this behind me. This is the actual rocket itself. After watching the launch, we were then brought into a room where we could see the full Saturn V rocket. It was amazing. and I found a piece of the moon that we could touch. It feels, feels like nothing like you would think as a moon. So it doesn't, it's not what you expected? Nothing like it. <laughs> no. After being blown away with Saturn V, we took the shuttle back to the main park area and went to the Atlantis exhibition. She had the spaceship Atlantis. Oh my word. Check this baby out. <laughs> Simon and Andrew lined up for a space launch simulation and Sienna and I were too chicken to go on it so we sat in the room and watched them. Before we knew it the day was over and we were heading back to the boat. We met with Michael that night to tell him of our adventures. Feeling grateful for our excellent stay in Cape Marina and trip to the Kennedy Space Center, we said our goodbyes to Cape Canaveral. First, we helped Michael get off, and then we joined him for our sail to West Palm Beach, where we'd attempt to travel down the ICW or Intercoastal Waterway. To see our trip to Palm Beach, make sure to subscribe now so that you're notified when the video is published. If you'd like to see videos about sailing, destinations, how-tos, marina reviews, and more, please support our channel by purchasing one of our sailing guides. Join the thousands of people that have already purchased our guides to get information that will save you money, provide practical tips and tricks, in addition to helping you get out and enjoy boating. Or if you're not in the need for helpful how-to information and checklists, Buy one of our high-quality nautical t-shirts, beach cover-ups, and other nautical gifts at our Etsy shop. We also have a lovely community of Patreon supporters, too, if that's something you're interested in. Links to all of these resources can be found in the description below. These educational and hopefully entertaining videos are made possible by the profits made through our guides, t-shirt sales, and Patreon supporters. To keep them going for free, please support Sailing Britican today.